welcome to LNP Renewable System Integrator. Today we are going to discuss about uh, CBTC that is Communication Based Train Control in Metro Station Basics. Okay, this session we had classified into three parts. Come, let's discuss about the part one. So, in part one, what are the things that we are going to discuss? So, before entering into what is CBTC, we should know about what are the different type of signaling systems which was used in the Indian Railways and what are the different type of control in the train movement. Okay and how uh, absolute block system signaling looks like and what are the limitations of it okay and how uh, intermediate block system looks like and what are the limitations of it okay how uh, automatic block system signaling looks like and what are the limitations of it and how a cap signaling works and what are the limitations of it and how a centralized traffic control signaling system looks like and what are the limitations of it so these are the things that we are going to discuss in the part one okay so this is a typical view of a metro station how it looks like there are so many designs available in the market okay so wherever you go there are different sort of metro stations which is available so we, you can see the uh, these sort of protocols which is being used there so today we are going to use so many short forms okay so if you are, have any sort of doubts so you can refer the abbreviations which are provided here so we have here we had provided abbreviation clarity for what is atc what is ato what is atp okay and um, what is dcs okay like this uh, for so many things we have given a clarity of abbreviations so if you are having any confusion when listening to the video you can read back and check the rewind and check these abbreviations for your clarity So the first thing is that what are the different type of control in the train movement. The first method is that time interval method. It is a very simple process in which uh, the train will be running, running in the same direction. Okay, they will be dispatched at a fixed time interval in successions. Okay, so this is how the in, uh, time interval method will be working. Okay, it has uh, but uh, in order to implement it practically, we have a following drawbacks. One is that we have different types of trains existing. We have express, mail, passenger, high speed, low speed, like that. So many trains are available in the market. So this time travel method will be difficult to implement. Okay. And also, you know, the speed of the trains will not be the same. And our terrain of our country is not same everywhere. Because, and also the brake power, hauling capacity and load of a train will be different for different trains. And also, you know, stopping places for all the trains are not same. So that's why it is difficult to follow this time interval method so then what is the advancement over this time interval method so there is a betterment called space interval method is adopted okay so, so and next time the uh, better method which is being followed by most of the people is that space interval method in this method what they will do they will consider the entire length of the track and they they will divide it into blocks Okay, the entry of the train into will be in the one block. It will be controlled in such a way that, okay, it will be uh, it will be allowed to enter only when, you know, uh, the train in the other block is free. So this is how uh, the space interval method is working. So in this method, what they will do, they will consider the entire length of the track and they will divide the section into blocks. Okay, so the uh, train will be allowed to enter in, in the inside a block only when it is free. Okay. For that, they are using the signals wherever required. Next, uh, there are so many conventional methods, different conventional methods which are used in Indian railway system for the train controlling. First one is the absolute block system. So it is most widely used in the Indian railways. So in this one, what they will do, say for example, if there is a station, okay, if it is a block section, okay, the you know the space between the two stations they will consider as a block section okay so the entry will be controlled by the human agencies that is the station masters at the two different stations okay train is allowed to leave a station only when block section is free okay and for the th there are two conditions for the line of clear one is that on the double line okay the line must be clear up to the fss that is first stop signal plus the adequate distance known as block overlap and in and on the one line okay the line must be clear on the train running in the same direction up to fss that is first stop signal plus bo that is block overlap and it's clear of train running in the opposite direction so all these things they will consider when providing the line clear signal 
so you can see this uh, you know block diagram of this absolute block system so how it is getting designed see here we have a fss that is first stop signal and this will be the last stop signal okay and this is the adequate bo that is block overlap so normally they will try to take block overlap of 180 meters and what are the limitations of this method so the main limitation of this method is that only one train we can deal with the help of this method this is one of the drawback of this uh, absolute block system so in order to overcome this limitation a new block system signaling system came into existence that is the intermediate block system so what they will do in the intermediate block system it is an arrangement made for the double line section for increasing the section capacity okay so here they will have a two section one will be the rear section and the other one will be the advanced section okay and uh, mostly it will be you know um, allocated with the uh, uh, signals okay so if you have a clarity over this automatic block system so automatic block system is an advancement over this intermediate block system in the automatic block system um the length of the two automatic section is normally equal to the braking distance as per the maximum speed permitted into the section entry into each automatic block signaling section is protected by the color light that is stop signals say for example um unless and until okay off signal will not be provided okay up to the next stop signal is clear okay so off signal will not be provided unless and until the next stop signal is clear okay the adequate distance referred above for the overlap is not more less than 120 meters okay say for example for the signal 1 to assume yellow color okay the line must be clear for one block and one overlap and for the signal 1 to assume green the line must be clear for two block and one overlap so in uh, you know in other words if you to be precise minimum one block and one overlap must be clear for allowing a train into the block section so this is how this automatic block signaling system works so what are the limitations of it so although the automatic block system is for the better utilization as compared to earlier two systems but the full capacity utilization is still not done so as you can see in the uh, diagram okay um if you try to know about the safety distancing okay it is more you know most of the spaces getting utilized for the safe distancing itself okay uh, say for example if a train b is occupying the block 3 if train a passes the signal 2 at a danger traveling in 100 km per hour it requires 1 km stop by applying the emergency brake so the block separating the train a from the train b must be at least 1 km in order to satisfy the safety requirements so it means it is taking the longest length so in order to be summarize okay the train can be closer together but the fixed block prevents train a from moving okay and as you can see there is a artificial separation is longer than the safety distance so it is happening next is the cap signaling method so it is a enhancement over the fixed block signaling system okay here the track side signals are not used okay the track circuits are used to determine the location of the train as you can see we have a different sort of things which is moving at a different speed one will be 40 km speed and the other one will be 60 km speed the other one will be the 80 km speed so the speed and the distance to go are displayed on the tod that is train overview display which will be inside the cap and it will be enforced by the on board atp that is automatic train protection okay this cap signaling allows for the multiple speed profile within the same block which means it has a capacity to allow a train to move at multiple speed within the block so within the same block we can allow the multiple train to pass through okay and also it it allows the train to travel at higher speed with the smaller blocks so the main advantage of it it reduces the headway between the trains and it increases the capacity okay 
the driver will receive an indication on the TOD that is train overview display when there is a speed transition. What are the limitations of it? Even though the cab signal allows for the smaller block, therefore a marginal increase in the capacity, but it has a similar limitations when compared to the previous signal. So even uh, we are covering the safety distance, there are few more distances getting wasted in this cab signaling method. So next if you try to know about this centralized traffic control system that is CTC, okay, it can be used for a large section encompassing of multiple interlock stations and a real-time monitoring of the traffic signals possible. Okay, and we need a CTC operator in a particular territory who can operate all the signal points, routes of any stations in his territory from the CTC. Okay, and what are the limitations of the CTC? The system is particularly suitable for single line sections where the pattern of traffic in is such that the train follows one another in quick successions during the certain part of a day. So for a single track or a single line section, we can use this centralized traffic control system. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and press the bell icon. If you want to know more and learn more, you can contact us. We get provided the contact details here. So we are providing uh, design, installation, testing and commissioning, uh, supports for solar on-grid, off-grid and hybrid applications. We are also providing a solar fencing for your agricultural farms. As a kit, you can contact us. Then we are also providing design, installation, testing and commissioning, consultancy, training supports for automation systems. That is for building automation and for the home automation systems. And if you need any trainings, if you are interested to work in GCC countries, uh, in the automation industry, especially for the building automation industry, we are providing training for PLC programmings for Siemens, Allen Broadly and Delta PLCs. So you can contact us. We have provided the contact details here. Thank you so much. And um, uh, let, let's try to meet in the other forthcoming part 2 and 3 or the same topics. Thank you.